This is one of the most interesting things in nature that I had never heard of before, ringing rocks. So let me take you on this adventure, because these rocks don't resonate from the amount of iron in them, which is what most people, including myself, first thought, or the way that they're stacked. But first I'll tell you how we even got here. Now I was visiting my buddy Gavin in Montana. He's got a great YouTube channel, I'll link his page down below. And we were in Big Sky Country for a maker collaboration. We had to make something from a TV show, so we built a SpongeBob SquarePants pineapple home into a life-size doghouse, complete with lights and windows that displayed bubbles in them for a true under the sea kind of vibe. Chloe with the dog loved it, and I'll make a video on that entire build process. But back to the ringing rocks. So we finished the pineapple build and had a couple days to goof around, and Gavin asked if I had ever heard of rocks that sing. I didn't know what he was talking about, and I had just finished a master's in architecture, with my final project being on ceramic bricks that absorb low frequency sound. These are the ceramic bricks we made, and they interlock four of them to make up a cavity and a neck, as well as an outside one, and absorb a very low frequency. But we'll get to this in a whole nother video, let's get back to the real rocks. So Gavin said we need to visit the ringing rocks, and the best way to get there is on dirt bikes. They have these hammers there, and you can just start hitting rocks and hear how they sound. Now most of them are regular thuds, but there's some special boulders that really ring with a whole range of frequencies. And after doing some more research, on mainly Wikipedia, it seems that we don't know for sure how these boulder fields are created, or even how the rocks can ring. The ones that are <laughs> on other rocks. That's wild! There are rock fields similar to this in the Lake District in England, two places in Australia, and Ringing Rocks Park in Pennsylvania and New Jersey area. And the way these rocks were deposited wasn't from a glacier carrying these boulders and melting, but actually from tears in the Earth's crust and magma hardening at the top surface over 200 million years ago. <laughs> this would be in the early Jurassic period. Hey. Wow, what? What? What are they made of, like, pure iron? <laughs> now geologists actually debate on how the rocks themselves ring. The iron content in the rocks range from about 9 to 12 percent, which is higher than the average igneous rock of 3 percent, but it's a normal range for a basalt rock, and those don't ring, so it's not the primary factor. Whoa, man, this is cool! However, in the 1960s, a professor took rocks that ring and normal boulders and cut them into thin slices. The rocks were measured again after 24 hours and the ringing rocks had expanded. This would indicate that there's an internal elastic stress that the rocks are under. Another interesting point is that even if the specific ringing boulders are removed, they'll still ring if they're placed alone. Now, of course, the way that they're stacked affects the sound, but it's interesting to know that if you break off a piece of a large ringing rock, it won't ring anymore because the internal stress has been removed. And one common theme through all these rock fields is the slope of the rock formations. In the winter, snow and ice are able to move the boulders around, and when it melts it leaves a lot of vacant space between them. If the slope angle is steeper than 25 degrees, then gravity will move the boulders downhill. And conversely, if the angle is too flat, then the spaces between the boulders will fill up with soil and the rocks will break down due to weathering. So if you're ever out and see a collection of big boulders, and if you have a hammer with you, give them a tap and see if any ringing comes from them. Nice, dude. I'm not confident enough to ride up there. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this, I got more videos right here. Check them out.